Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be talking about what could arguably be one of the best springtime bass fishing lures of all time and that's going to be a fluke style bait. Today we're going to break down everything you need to know from your gear, how and where to fish it, why it's so effective. Hopefully we'll catch some big bass along the way. I've seen a ton up here cruising around shallow, some big ones around these docks. Perfect conditions for doing this type of technique in the springtime. Right before they go to spawn, while they're spawning, post spawn, like that time of year, this is probably one of the best baits and you cannot beat it over some of the other stuff that you can choose from. Uh, so stay tuned, let's get right into it. We're gonna start catching some fish on the fluke. Hopefully we'll run into some big ones. And before we get into today's video, if you could go down and below and hit the subscribe button for me, it helps me out a ton. I'm uh, trying to reach that 100,000 subscriber mark. It's been a dream of mine and now it's starting to get closer and closer so if you could help me out and get to that goal hit that subscribe button down below be much appreciated but now let's catch some fish all right so we're in this area right here uh, basically fishing these shallow flats looking around for any type of fish pre-spawn spawn post there's probably no post spawners yet but there's definitely pre-spawners fish that are actively spawning uh, cruising around on these flats we have some grass and scattered rock and then the more important parts are going to be those docks um, that's where I'll probably catch most of my fish, whether it's skipping the fluke underneath of it or doing exactly like I just did right there and paralleling either the front or the side. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll throw it right down the front. I'll fish that first, see if I can draw any fish out from the front. And then if that doesn't work, I'll throw it down the sides as I get closer to the dock um, and see if I can get any that way. And basically all I'm trying to do is create a reaction bite for a fish that thinks it's an easy, uh, meal of a dying bait fish. It's a lot of, um, it's it's literally fishing a jerk bait, but it's a soft jerk bait and it stays a little higher up in the water column, doesn't get snagged in all this grass, it's more effective around these docks, you can skip it underneath. Um, a lot of times it doesn't, it's a lot more natural, I guess, in a sense. I don't know why fish bite it better, but a lot of times if you're pond fishing or fishing for like really finicky clear water fish, they'll tend to bite this better when they're cruising up on the shallow uh, flat areas. And I backlashed, which happens. Um, but that's kind of what we're, we're targeting here. And you can vary your retrieve. A lot of times what I like to do is just a couple of twitches and let it sit and see if they'll draw out to it. And then if I can see one chasing it actively, that's when I'll speed it up and I'll try and get them to just react to it and run up on it and grab it. Um, but we kind of, I, I really just play around with my retrieve and see what the fish want for the given day and try to make accurate casts around these docks, which is sometimes pretty difficult. The fish today definitely seem to be grouped up in small areas. So, I mean, we could go quite a while without even seeing a fish and then all of a sudden run into a whole bunch of them. But, uh, that's kind of what we're hoping for. We're just going to kind of work this around and cover some water with it. The nice thing is since you can fish it quickly, you can cover water with this thing. And then if you find some that you need to entice into biting, you can like work it right in their face really slowly like this. Um, so it's really just a matter of the fish's mood on the given day, but that's one reason. Um, I mean, you can even throw this thing out there and just let it sink like a Senko almost because it shimmies on the way down as it falls with that hook Texas rigged in the belly like that. Um, so there's multiple different ways you can fish this and you can adjust it to the mood of the fish. And I think that's probably what makes it so effective for these springtime bass. Um, they just really can't resist it. And it's hard to catch them on, uh, sometimes when it's hard to catch them on anything else, this bait always uh, pulls through for me. There's one. Just a little guy but it's a start. The nice part about a fluke is no matter how big the fish are in your lake, they'll eat it, especially the junior or whatever you wanna throw. Um, today we're fishing with the six cents flush right here. Um, if you wanna get any, you can check out the uh, links down in the description below. I link all the gear that I use in the videos. And if you wanna use my code, Quince, you'll save 10% off your order. Helps me out a ton, um, but the regular super fluke works great. Caffeine Shad, I used to use those. Um, I've used numerous brands of these baits before. Um, this used to be like my bread and butter when I was a kid fishing around in ponds and stuff where like the fish are just impossible to get to bite sometimes. 
I would fish all types of different fluke baits and everything like that. I would basically go around these ponds with a spinning rod and uh, a pocket full of flukes and some hooks and that's what I would do. I would just twitch it around and to this day it still works in big lakes like this uh, where you can catch them doing that as well. That was a little baby smallmouth, nothing special there, but hopefully we'll find some bigger ones. Um, right down the front of that dock, I was just paralleling it. I mean, that fish could have just been like staging up underneath or who knows what that fish was doing, but he was just hanging out there. And uh, when that fluke came by, he just couldn't resist it. So we'll keep twitching it around. Um, I do have this a flush, I have a watermelon red one since the water's so clear um, and there's a lot of bluegills in this lake and perch and stuff like that. I wanted a more like natural bluegill type color rather than um, like a shad. Usually I use like a white or a bait fish color, um, but I went with a lot of like my more natural colors today and hopefully it was the correct decision although with the overcast i could see a white one working pretty well today too just because they can see it from a far way away um, and also smallmouth just like bright colors and then i have this rigged up on a seven foot medium heavy just a basic casting rod the basic um, i've fished them on spinning rods before really anything medium medium heavy will work just fine I have a five aught extra wide gap hook, have a Texas rigged on there, weightless. And then about 12 to 18 inches up, I do have a swivel. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. Um, it's really dependent upon how fresh my line is, to be honest with you. So I just started fishing this season and this is brand new line. I didn't want to mess it up. So I put that swivel on there so that just that last 18 inches of your line will get all twisted up and the rest of it's still good. Once you're done fishing the fluke, you can cut the bait off and keep fishing. Um, I do have 15 pound test fluorocarbon to make sure that I can get these fish away from these docks and get a good hook set. Um, I'm using my Cash and Icon worm and jig rod and my Corrado MGL that I always use for this. So um, standard seven foot medium heavy setup, basically the same thing I always use and we'll see if we can find us some bigger ones. There's another one. He's such a baby. We're gonna find a big one, I promise you that. But it is a fun numbers bait. Caught both a large mouth and a small mouth so far. Little dude, see you buddy. There's actually a small mouth on bed right here and we'll see if I can get him to bite the fluke too. A lot of times what you can do is actually lay this on their bed and then twitch it and it'll make them react to it. Got her. You just can let it sit on that nest and they cannot resist. Nice one. Nice little smallie. Of course the back camera wasn't recording, but uh, there you go. Little smallmouth bass right there. Uh, not a bad one two and a half pounder, but uh, she was just sitting on that bed right there, shook that bait in place, tried to entice her into biting it, and then she inevitably picked it up and tried to move it off the bed, and we got her. So fluke, excellent for pre-spawn and spawn fish. So we're gonna get back to it and see if we can find another mix of both and put some more fish in the boat on the fluke. So see ya, buddy. Actually have the big, record big camera recording this time. Go figure, I catch the biggest fish of the day and not recording. He also toasted my fluke, so we'll get us another one here. Um, not really doing anything special with my rig. I'm just getting a watermelon red flush here. I do like these because they come in this little clamshell pack. They take up a little bit more room in the boat, but like that, I, I like the clamshell because then you don't have bent fluke tails. And the worst thing is when you got bent fluke tails, they don't they don't work right in the water. Uh, so sometimes it's easier when you just have them in the clamshell like that. I used to keep my flukes in um, Plano boxes when I had regular flukes or caffeine shads. I would fit the uh, compartments to the same size as the fluke so that the tails wouldn't bend. A lot of times I'd even boil the tails of them. There actually looks to be another bed right up here. And if there is, we're gonna catch her too. Big one. 
one. Big one. That was sweet. I literally watched him wake on that. Oh, he's not that big. He's decent, but like he's not giant. I skipped it way back under that dock over there. And I watched him come off that jet ski lift and just start waking on it until he pulled all the slack out of my line. That was awesome. Look at that. Two, two and a half pounder, not a bad fish, but definitely a pre-spawner just sitting up there chilling. Who knows, could have been on a bed back there and just chased my bait off the bed. You never know, casting around the fluke, you can catch them all. So great way in the spring, get him back. See you, buddy. There's a bed right there. I got her. That was sweet. That's a nice fish. Sweet. Worked that fish on that bed. Took me a while. Of course, the big camera is not recording again. I am struggling today by all means. Catching fish, landing fish, figuring out what they're biting on. But we're making it happen. We're going to get this girl back in the water and try and catch us some more and we're gonna fix our big camera so that you can see it back there. But it's a nice two and a half, maybe three pounder, but not a bad fish. We're gonna send her on her way. What the hell am I doing? Got that one. Ugh. Oh no, he's wrapped. Oh no, come on. Oh, get out of there. Wow, that was quite the catch right there. Tiny one, but we caught another little cruiser sitting around out here. The fluke bite has absolutely kind of gone away today. Uh, as soon as that sun got out and the wind started blowing a little bit and the water got warmer, those fish have moved on. I think they're all on beds. I've seen tons and tons of beds. We got some other videos we got to get to filming, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video talking about how to fish a fluke catching fish with a fluke in the springtime. It's one of my favorite ways to do so. Not all of them are small. We did catch a couple decent ones. We're gonna let him go, but if you wanna see another fluke fishing video, check this one out right here. Earlier pre-spawn fish, that's what I was doing in that video. So if you wanna learn a little bit more about that, go ahead, but see ya, dude. Leave a like down below, hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.